Hello everyone. Today I wanted to try something different and give you an engineering video. Uh, so if you're interested in such things and you enjoy this video, please let me know if you liked it and maybe I'll make more videos about engineering in the future. Specifically today I want to talk about tolerances, uh, which are on the surface are a very interesting subject, but I think you'll find that it's more interesting than you might think. The subject came to mind recently when I was sorting through a box uh, of the board game, uh, The Game of Life, which is a game I've never actually played, but when I was sorting through the pieces, uh, there were these uh, pegs that you have to put in the top of a uh, little plastic car piece. But when you put the pegs in the top of the car piece, they the, the tolerance isn't very good. The, the engineering tolerances haven't been done adequately, and some of the pegs are tough to put in, and some of the pegs are so loose that they just fall out. Uh, there's a similar problem with the um, old bully, bu bully bookcase here. When putting that together, there's some dowel pins uh, underneath each of the shelves, and they are supposed to be pressed in by hand into some little holes in, in, in this piece. You can see the holes down the side, perhaps. And they have a similar problem of tolerances, where sometimes the dowel pin will go in and come out easily. You can just push them in with your fingers. And sometimes you have to get a pair of pliers or, you know, really just hurt your, hurt your finger and, and thumb trying to get them out. Um, that's what you get with cheap engineering. And it's not always a bad thing for a really bookcase. You only have to put that together uh, probably once or maybe twice and take it apart a similar number of times. So having bad tolerances isn't such a bad thing. But for the game of life, uh, you know, all the pieces are scattered around the board. It's um, it's not great. But one product that does it really well is Lego. And I think that it might be why Lego is so expensive. And I'm going to explain today what it takes to get a really good tolerance on a particularly a plastic injection molded part uh, which is what which is how lego is made as you probably already know a plastic injection molded part is um, made with the use of a um, usually a steel machined tool usually two or more metal blocks that come together to form a sort of shell where the plastic is injected into uh, to form the the actual part that you're making it solidifies and then you take it out and that would be great in a universe where the tool would never wear down or the tool itself did not have its own manufacturing tolerances for the machining process. The thing about tools is that they wear out uh, and not only that but the pieces that come out of the tools are not always perfect. Sometimes they cool at a different rate and they uh, that causes them to have a, a slightly different um, different dimensions, they become a little bit warped compared to each other. So uh, if you think about Lego pieces, no two Lego pieces are identical. There's the Lego piece that was designed by the designer. There's no Lego piece in the world that perfectly fits that design. Uh, every piece is um, microscopically uh, bigger or smaller in certain dimensions and then um, you know warped slightly. No edge is completely straight. That's just the world of um, that's the real world of manufacturing. But what Lego does really well is make sure that each Lego brick fits together with every other Lego brick. And not just in that batch, but also they fit together with pieces of Lego that were made 20 years ago, or wherever Lego started manufacturing. You can take old Lego and new Lego and put them together and they still have the same approximate amount of force required to, to shove them together and to take them apart again. And it's a level of quality that you don't really get with uh, um, the third-party Lego uh, manufacturers. So how do they do that? Well, so the metal tool, after you make it, after you machine it down and start using it, it uh, after a few thousand pieces or tens of thousands of pieces being made, it will start to wear down. So uh, when you, the, the dimension, if you think about just a, a regular sort of width dimension, as as you use the tool, that will start to wear in the tool, so the tool will start wearing away and the piece that you're making will start getting bigger in in some dimensions because the plastic inside is expanding to fit the tool, which is wearing away. So you can imagine the tool wearing away and the piece inside getting bigger each time it's uh, a new piece is made, um, ever, so, ever so slightly. But over tens of thousands of pieces, this accumulated effect means that the tool is no longer making pieces that are within the tolerance that you've uh, that the designer has designed into it to make sure that these Lego pieces fit together so well. So what tool makers do usually is 
they machine the tool to be on the large side, if that makes sense. So the it it the tool starts off making pieces that are slightly undersized. So the Lego that comes out of the first tool will be microscopically smaller than um, than the designed uh, intent of the, than the actual designer designed them to be in the CAD or in the drawings. They start off undersized, and then as the um, as each of the pieces of Lego comes off that tool, um, thousands and thousands of them, that that tool will wear away so that eventually the the, the the Lego will Lego coming off the production line will start to be become the designed size, being closer to what the uh, what the actual designer intended, and then it'll start to come out oversized. It'll get bigger and bigger. At that point, when it becomes too big, so that the pieces coming off are no longer within tolerance, you've got to replace the tool. Uh, so you start it all over again. You replace it with another tool that is now undersized, and you do the whole thing again. It goes from small to bigger and bigger and bigger and then too big. So it's very expensive to keep things in a tight tolerance. You can imagine if the if the tolerance on a Lego piece is plus or minus uh, 0.1 millimeters on the, the length dimension, on the longest dimension, uh, that means that you've got to design the tool so that it starts off making pieces that are uh, minus 0.1 of the nominal size and then eventually makes a plus 0.1 millimeter to the novel size piece, but if you if you want to make a cheap Lego, if you're a third party manufacturer who wants to uh, compete in the market and make cheap Lego, you can you can increase that tolerance to 0.2 um, on either side. You can make that tool last twice as long. You design it to be uh, twice as small to begin with, not twice as small, but you know design it to be smaller to begin with, and then it'll last about twice as long as it would if your tolerance was 0.1 plus or minus. So you replace the tool half as often and you have to make half as many tools. You have to spend much less time um, taking off the tool off of the production, putting on a new one, uh, all of that sort of management required to organize that process. And you can end up making products that are cheaper by a certain margin. Well, the amount spent on the material is probably the same. The product that you're getting is of a uh, lower quality, or rather it's less consistent, so some of the products that come off will fit together perfectly. Um, the, this theoretical off-brand Lego, uh, some of them will fit together perfectly, but some of them will um, fall apart loosely, like the um, the Game of Life pieces that I was uh, playing with this weekend, or they'll be they'll be hard to push in, like the, uh, like the Billy Bookcase uh, dowels, but you might be able to get away with it, right, if you if you make these uh, cheap products that you, and the people buying them might even uh, know that they're of an inferior quality and they don't care uh, if they don't um, they don't really mind having to you know maybe throw away the odd really bad piece that's just way too loose or they don't mind having a variable um, assembly force but that's just one of those things that mechanical engineers have to think about when producing something um, on mass uh, for mass production for very very high volumes it becomes a real uh, a real issue and it's one of those things that you just don't think about when you buy something that's been plastic injection molded but designing things not just to work at, as they've been designed but also to work at a tolerance at the extremes of each tolerance is um, there's a real I want to say an art to it but it is more of a science and there's a whole language of uh, notation in technical drawings that denotes uh, geometric tolerances and it's you have to be trained to be able to not just read it but also to understand what it means to um, to apply it to a product how to measure it on a scale of thousands and most of all to understand as a designer which tolerances matter and where they can be um, where they can be left loose and where they have to be tightened up Anyway, that's just a field of mechanical engineering that I think is interesting and that not many people know of, so I thought I would try and explain it to you. I hope it has made some sense, but I don't know how effective I am at communicating this kind of knowledge. So if it hasn't made any sense and you still are none the wiser about engineering tolerances, then please let me know and I'll try and um, either work on my uh, communication education abilities uh, or maybe I'll just give up on doing engineering videos completely. Anyway, have a good day and I'll see you again soon.